let's take a look at adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing with significant figures. Now let's start with addition and subtraction. When you add and subtract, the location of the decimal point matters. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's say 123.62 meters plus 8.9 meters. So if you just add the numbers together, you get 132.52 meters. But with correct sig figs, that would really be 132.5 meters. That's because one of the numbers has no information about the hundredths place. So if we don't really know what's going on in the hundredths place in that number, then when we add them together, we also don't know what's really going on in the hundredths place. So when we add and subtract, the result that we get only has sig figs down to the bigger least significant decimal place. And let's see if we can make some sense of that. So let's see if we have 15.3 seconds and we subtract 5.1 seconds. Okay, well, if we just do it in a calculator, that's 10.13 seconds. However, the least significant decimal place in the first number is the hundredths place. And in the second number, it's the tenths place. Well, the tenths is bigger. So our result can only have significant digits down to the tenths place. All right, let's look at a second example. 520 kilograms plus 13 kilograms. Well, if you just add those together, that's 533 kilograms. However, that first number only has significant digits in the hundreds and tens place. The second number has significant digits in the tens and the ones place. Well, okay, that means that when we add them together, we don't really know what's going on in the ones place. The least significant decimal place we can have is the tens place. So that would round to 530 kilograms. All right, let's do another one. 65.341 meters plus 2.1458 meters. Okay, well, that gives us 67.4868 meters. However, if we look at the least significant decimal place in those two, one has the least significant decimal place in the thousandths, another has the least significant decimal place in the ten thousandths, and the greater of those is the thousandths. So the answer, we round to the thousandths place. So 67.489 meters. And a last one, 0 0.181 kilograms plus 0 0.3 kilograms. So if we just add those together, it's 0 0.481 kilograms. But look, let's see, okay, significant decimal place down to the thousandths and then down to just the tenths. So our answer can only go down to the tenths, which is if we round, 0 0.5 kilograms. And notice that I rounded there. Actually, in those last two, I rounded to the decimal place in the answer. Okay, let's think about multiplying and dividing. So when you multiply or divide, the significant figures in the result have to be the same as the factor with the fewest significant figures. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's say we take 3.4 meters times 5.234 meters. If you put that in your calculator, what you get is 17.7956 square meters. But let's look at those two things that we multiplied together. One of them has two sig figs and the other has four sig figs. Our answer can only have two sig figs. All right, so when we round it to two sig figs, it's 18 square meters. The other digits we don't know anything about. Okay, let's take a look at a division example. Let's say we have 23.5 meters divided by 1.265 seconds. Okay, well you put that in your calculator, you get 18.5770751 meters per second, but that's a lot of digits. We don't really know it out to all of those decimal places. The first number on top has three significant figures, the one on the bottom has four, 
So we go with the fewer number. We go with three significant figures. If we round that number to three significant figures, we get 18.6 meters per second. One more example, 9.4513 meters times 1.2 meters. So we have five significant figures, two significant figures. We multiply the numbers together, we get 11.34156 meters per, excuse me, meters squared. If we round that to two sig figs like we should, that's 11 square meters. So maybe that seems like it all makes your life way more complicated than it should be. The good news is, in most situations in this class, not including labs, but when we do practice problems, we will usually keep three significant digits. I can't promise that all the time, but usually a safe thing to do is to keep three significant digits. That's gonna keep our attention on the physics, not on the details of digits. And I admit that this is sloppy, but we're still learning. And so I'm going to say that that's an acceptable thing to do often in a physics class. But in the back of your head, or when I directly ask you, or when we're working with real measurements in a lab setting, you should still be able to use these rules.